Once you have a pumpkin that you think is going to be the one, you're going to want to start training the vine so that it makes the pumpkin a lot easier to grow. So you can see here, I have a pumpkin right there and I think that's going to be the one. So what I've been doing very gradually, this is very important, very gradually during the heat of the day, I have been gradually training this vine into a curve. The reason being is if this vine was flat, the pumpkin's gonna grow into it. it. That's just how it goes. So now we have a pumpkin growing and it has all this extra space to take up through that curve. So this is a very important thing to do even as a beginner, because if you don't, there's gonna be a lot of strain on the vine. Another thing I did to prepare for the pumpkin is I started mounding up the soil. For me, I probably did about a foot just because I only have so much soil. This is not something you have to do as a beginner. The reason I do it is because when the pumpkin grows, it's gonna get really tall and it's gonna lift the stem up with it and normally what growers do is they just cut the roots really close where the pumpkin is so that the vine can lift with the pumpkin to avoid strain on the vine but I want my vines to have roots so I want a root here I want a root there I want a root there and the only way to have a root but still allow the pumpkin to lift up is to mound the dirt up so when I first pollinate it, I'm gonna have to have some supports for the pumpkin and then I'll gradually get rid of the supports as the pumpkin gets bigger. And that'll give me a chance to have roots as close to the pumpkin as possible because those roots are what really supply the pumpkin the most. If you wanna control the genetics of your pumpkin, it's important to survey your plant every day to figure out when you have a female that's ready to pollinate. Now there's two types of flowers on the pumpkin. There's a female flower and a male flower. You can tell the difference because the female flower has a little pumpkin at the base. So this one in the frame right now is a female flower. Now, how do you know when it's gonna open? Well, it takes a little practice, but in general, it starts off as all green in this flower area and the day before it's gonna pollinate and open up, it's gonna start to turn yellow here at the tip and start to swell up a little. So I think this flower is gonna open up tomorrow because I see the yellowing of the tip, but it may not open up until the day after tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna take a very close look at everything tomorrow. Now, if I want to control the pollination, I have to cover up the flower so it doesn't open itself to the insects because once insects get into it, all the pollen that they've been touching from other plants will now have contaminated this flower. So I am going to cover it up with a paper cup and all I do, is put it right on top of the flower. Now, right now, it looks like it's too big for the flower, but when it opens up, nothing's gonna get inside of that. Some alternatives to paper cups are uh, zip tie. I've seen people use zip ties to close the flower shut. I've also seen people use cheesecloth. I'm not a fan of cheesecloth because I, I don't know how big pollen is, but I worry that the pollen could make its way through the little mesh parts of the cheesecloth. So I recommend either doing a paper cup or a zip tie. So here we have a male flower and we know it's a male flower because it has a long stalk and there's no pumpkin at the base. This male flower is most likely gonna open tomorrow. Again, the same as the female. It's gonna start turning yellow at the tip and it's gonna start to swell up a little bit. Now, if you look to the left of it, you'll see another male flower. Uh, the male flowers are way more abundant on the pumpkin plants and there's lots and lots of them. Now you can see the one on the left is still immature. That is not ready to open. You'll see a male flower that opened up most likely today. So that pollen is too old to use tomorrow. So what we're gonna do is go back to this guy and we're gonna put a cup on him because he's gonna open up tomorrow too. Now you wanna do this for as many males as possible because you want as much pollen on the female as you can. So go around your plant, find all the males that look like they're gonna open up tomorrow, and you may not be 100% perfect with it, but just do your best. Cover them all with cups, and then I'll show you what to do with them tomorrow. 
All right, it's the moment of truth. Did our flower open up? Uh, based on how the cup is positioned, it looks like it has. So let's take a look at it. Woohoo! So getting a closer look at the flower, you can see that it has four lobes. One, two, three, four. They used to think that the number of lobes correlated to the size of the pumpkin, but that's been disproven. There is some suggestion that the symmetry of the lobes will contribute to the symmetry of the pumpkin. So we like symmetrical lobes. So here I have picked some of my male flowers. The more the better. Technically only need one little grain of pollen to touch each lobe, but again, the more pollen you have, the more chance you have of success. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take each male and I'm just going to gently peel the flowers off. You don't want to be too rough with it because you don't want to knock all the pollen off. Now if you look closely you should be able to see all the little pollen grains on this stigma. And we're going to use this as a paintbrush and paint the female with the male. So to actually pollinate it, you just take your male flower and you just touch all the lobes with it. Get that pollen all over the lobes of the female. Sometimes I'll tap it and just rub it all over. And you're going to do this with every single male and that should be more than enough. If you want to keep this a controlled pollination, there's a few things you have to remember. One, when you use your males, make sure you only take them from one plant so that you know that the male genetics are simply from that one plant. And you also have to make sure those males are covered up as we discussed earlier. Now the second thing is after you pollinate it, we have to still prevent the bees from getting in there. So you're just gonna cover it back up with either your cup or your zip tie or whatever you decide to use. I use my cup, I feel it works well. So you keep that on. In 24 hours, you're gonna take that cup off because the pollination will have been set by then. If you leave the cup on longer than that, that flower is gonna get wet and you're gonna risk getting that blossom nub rotten. This pollination I just did, it was just for the sake of the video. This actually is not the pollination I'm going to be using. For one, you can see I did not put the S-curve into the vine. And two, um, this plant isn't big enough for what I want. Now, if you're a beginner and this is your first pumpkin, this size plant is perfectly fine. For me, I like to have at least 18 to 20 secondaries behind the pumpkin. And in this plant, there's only about 13 or 14. So I'm gonna be a little more patient and wait for this plant to get a little bigger because all of this plant behind the pumpkin is what's gonna feed the pumpkin. So the bigger plant we have, the bigger pumpkin we have, theoretically. So we're gonna actually get rid of this pollination, sadly, even though it's super exciting. And I'm gonna be patient, because in the past I have not been patient and I've paid for it. So we will wait for this plant to get bigger. We will make, wait for more secondaries to form and we will hopefully win the competition. It's been 24 hours since I pollinated the pumpkin, so it is now the next morning. So what I do is I take the cup off. After 24 hours, the pollination either took or it didn't, so there's no need for the cup anymore. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, which you don't have to do, but I do because it prevents the blossom nub from rotting, is I just start removing the petals of the leaf. I don't remove it all, like I still leave a little bit there. Eventually it'll loosen up and just fall off on its own. If you force it, it might rip things you don't want to rip. Uh, the reason I do this is basically to keep this area nice and aired out. Otherwise the flower will just close in over it and I've had my blossom nubs get moldy. 